it's Lee from ColoringQueen.net and today I want to show you my new Astra Pastel Love pencils. They came all the way from Poland and I'm not sure I'm pronouncing the name correctly but they are just a whole set of 50 pastel coloured pencils. So if you're in the market for something pastel you might like these. They come in a pretty sturdy cardboard box now I do believe that they are just student grade as you can see from the cover when we put it down in a minute they're targeted towards school children ages 3 plus and when you go onto their website and I'll pop the link below you'll see that they have a range of products sort of mainly aimed at students but they do have some fancier pencils in lovely little metal tins and they also have some watercolours and they even have some cheaper pencils like crayons and really cheap pencils for children. Now, I'm sorry if you hear Millie in the background, she's being a little terror in the colour cave today. So there you can see them, what they look like right in the box. Now mine was shipped from Poland from the very first link below this video and I believe they have a discount on at the moment. Now there was no damage whatsoever during the shipping process. They arrived here perfectly safe. They weren't even out of order. You see me unbox them there on camera. No damage whatsoever to them. And I'm sorry if my light is shining on those. Now I've actually been colouring in my Lady Spring colouring book with these pencils so they're a bit out of order now as you can see there they are up against a normal Prismacolor or a Polychromo now you can see that they've got an end cap on them so we can't tell whether the barrel is centered or not from using them it feels like they are actually very well made for the price they're only a budget student pencil remember they come pre-sharpened as you can see and they had actually quite a good tip on them if you look at that first photo before I've been using them. You can see my blue pencils get a little bit short there. Now one of the things that uh, is a bit of a negative is that they don't have any names or numbers on them which is a bit sad uh, but I'm going to actually use my Posca pen to write some numbers on them at some stage. Now from all of my looking on their website they don't seem to have any open stock either so that's also a little bit of a shame. Now I'm just going to use my m &R pencil sharpener and show you how easy it is to sharpen these pencils. I'm actually surprised as I said I've been colouring in my Lady Spring colouring book for the last few days with them and I'm surprised at how little I've actually needed to sharpen them but this blue did get a bit of a pounding from me so it does need to sharpen and that's really simple no damage there and a very clean sharpen on them. Now the barrel of these is made from wood and not a lot of detail about the type of wood but I believe it's all environmentally friendly. So let's try it on a bit of toned paper and see how it looks. Now these are student grade so there's no information on light fastness. I would take it that they're not light fast so they for use in your colouring books so if you want it for selling things or for commission art or for framing I would expect them to fade because bear in mind they're just budget student pencils. What I am surprised about is how creamy they are when they go down. Now that's not initially for me when I was swatching them I felt an initial scratchiness with them and I actually had to give them a turn in the pencil sharpener to get off any material that they may have put on as part of their packaging because they felt a bit scratchy initially but they do actually feel quite creamy going on and if I was to compare them it would be perhaps to the Prismacolor Scholars they're sort of budgety and they're sort of creamy and a little bit hard like the Prismacolor Scholars if you're familiar with those so let's try them on black and they go on super easy. They're, as I said, they're quite creamy. What initially struck with 
me was I was expecting more vibrancy and I have to keep telling myself that these are pastel colours and they're not the primary colours and the vibrant colours that we normally get. So for me it was a little bit difficult to adjust to looking at a lighter toned colour. So <laughs> I've, I've had to do it a few times on this black just to convince myself that it will look good. And they go on super easy on these Spectrum Noir black pads that I've got. They just go on like a dream. Very, very easy. And they blend into each other very easily as well. Now, they're definitely not the sort of pencils that you want to buy if it's your only set of pencils. Because you will need a white pencil and you'll need some darker pencils for shadows and whatnot. But I am surprised in my Lady Spring book, which I'll show you next week, uh, how much I could actually do with them and just by using a white Prismacolor pencil and a Sienna Brown uh, Prismacolor pencil just to add a little bit more shadows where I needed it. So if you're after pastels, it is pastel and that's what I've got to keep remembering myself <laughs> that they are lighter and they are student grade so I can't really compare them to my Prismacolors or whatnot because uh, they are just purely pastel coloured pencils and they are student grade they're not artist grade but I'm surprised when you're using them this is on create space paper they go on super smoothly and I'm just doing this really rough and I'm actually standing up for this because Millie's on my chair. <laughs> but just going on super rough, I'm surprised at how easy it is to blend them and you don't need a blender. And I've also found that the lack of the white pencil doesn't bother me. I've used both my Prismacolor white pencil on these and they blend it out and tint it. And I've also used my Caran d'Ache uh, white luminance pencil, which is, I think I've only got two luminance pencils. And uh, they both work really well with that. There's a lot of light colours here that you can use for skin tone, so I'm just mucking around here. I'm not doing anything. This is my page that I use just to experiment with different pencils but I am surprised that you can get quite a lot of colour with these and quite a lot of pigment but initially as I said I had to give it a little bit of a sharpen because there was something on the tip that was making it a bit scratchy. We'll give it some blush. So you're able to do a lot of layers with this as you just seen me doing there. I'm just adding and adding. And I'm doing it incredibly roughly. And it's standing up on the 100 pound weight of the Create Space paper. 100 GSM I think it is. So. And obviously if I was sitting down, it would be a lot easier. Now the great thing is that there's no pencil dust so far with what I've tried it in. And this is in Joanna Basford's Secret Garden. Again, this is my experiment page. Uh, whatever I've tried it in so far hasn't produced any like little pencil dust. So I'm happy with that. It's got a couple of like neon colours in the this set, so I thought we might do something neon-y on Joanna's book. And so I'm just going in with this bright pink or neon pink. Now it's not putting out as much pigment as I would like, and blending in on with the lighter pink. In this book, it doesn't feel that good to be honest. It, yeah, I. I feel like it could be better but what happens is that when you add more colour then it starts to feel better in Joanna's book but initially it felt like it was slithering on the page it felt very waxy and it really didn't feel comfortable at all but in this book what I found was 
more color works better <laughs> so it's good if you like to do layers now remember they're never going to be your prisma colors they're always just going to be budget pastel colors but if you're just wanting to color in your books and you just want some lighter colors some pastels you can see how light they are up against and how much less pigment they have up against other pencils I've tested in the past. Uh, this page has quite a lot of different brands on it and you can see that they really are very very light uh, in some of these books so not as much pigment as you will find from your more expensive pencils. But they're pastels so they're meant to be light. As I said, adding more colour makes it a lot smoother experience in Joanna's book. Okay, let's try a Japanese colouring book and a Rees. I have a page here that I do all my experiments on, so it's the Swan page. Putting on this first bit of colour, it doesn't seem to be grabbing the paper as much as I would like and uh, I'm feeling like I'm not getting anywhere to be honest I feel like I'm not getting enough pigment out at all but just like with Joanna's book adding more color and adding more pencil actually improves it so if you just want to do solid color it might not be the pencil for you because it seems to be with the exception of the Create Space book from Hannah Lynn there, it seems to be the more colour you add, the better these pencils are. But they're still always going to be light because they're pastels. And I don't believe from their website that this particular range of their product comes in any other darker shades. But they do have other pencils in a fancy tin that uh, look more expensive and uh, they have darker shades. So more colour the better with this one. So I'm just uh, putting anything on now. <laughs> And it's all going pretty well. But this is when I really notice that adding the extra colour is really going well. And this must be the third or fourth pencil I've put over this. And this is where it gets much better. Uh, it's actually covering up the tooth on the paper and it's actually making it easier to work with. I don't feel that I'm not getting the pigment because now I finally feel like it is covering it. So I'm going to try my white on it, my Caran d'Ache white. This set doesn't come with a white pencil but generally except for my Prismacolor pencil and this Caran d'Ache white I really don't tend to use the white pencils that are in most sets because I prefer this pencil or my Caran d'Ache white. Now this is my Caran d'Ache uh, blender pencil and I just wanted to see how it would perform just ironing out a couple of those little white specks there which worked perfectly well. Now they're not water soluble pencils, these pencils are well, this company actually does make watercolour pencils, not in this range, but in those other brands that they also have. But I wanted to see what would happen if I put water on it. And what it does is it softens out any stroke marks, but it doesn't actually move the pigment around like watercolour does. But it does give it a little bit of softness. So we'll try it on my Queens of uh, Polar bookmark here that I got with my Lady Spring colouring book the other day and I coloured the other side with Bambino crayons and this one I coloured or well, I haven't finished colouring it but this one because I went on to the Lady Spring colouring book but uh, this one I used the pencils on and you can see I've got quite a bit of water there and all it 
does is basically soften out my line marks and it doesn't move the pigment around anymore. And when it's dried, it just looks like a softer version of when I coloured it. So let's test the erasability. Now I've got a little problem with my replacement rubbers that I've put in my uh, electronic eraser today. They keep wanting to fall out. I think I've put the wrong brand in there. But I am amazed at how quickly it completely erases the pencil. Like there's no residue or shadow. It just completely takes it off, which is fascinating for me. So I wanted to see if my non-electric razor, my Tombow that is one of my favourite erasers, would perform just as well. So here it is. And it's just taking the pigment off. It's not as good as the Derwent, but it is taking it off. But nowhere near as good as my electric eraser. So let's try it erasing in the Secret Garden colouring book. And there's that flower that we did earlier. So the Tombow first. And it's taking it off. It's uh, more softening it. And I have to press a little bit firmer if I want to actually take it all off. But the electric eraser, and bear in mind my eraser's not properly fixed. I think I've got the wrong one in there. It's taking it all off and it's super easy. It's just going back to page colour, which usually with the artist grade pencils I get some shadowing. So I guess the great thing about these is if you are making mistakes, this will really take it back really easily without any damage to the paper. And uh, whereas if you're using student grade pencils with more pigment in them and and better bindings, then you might not be able to take it back as easily with your eraser. So very easy to take it off on the Hannah Lynn colouring book as well. Now trying the Tombow Mono, and it is working quite well on this Create Space paper. And it's taking it off far better than it did in Joanna's and Arie's colouring books. So let's try it on a raise and this is still a little bit damp from that water I popped on earlier but it is uh, taking it off. So we'll try the Derwent and uh, my little eraser is going crazy here. It is taking it off. It's still a little bit damp over on that side. And I think I'll just uh, break that eraser. <laughs> so I've just broken off my eraser so it's easier to work with. And I cannot believe how quickly it has taken off all that pencil and brought it back to the page colour. Unbelievable. So I created a swatch chart for this. I looked online and I couldn't find one. Now, of course, the first problem that I had was that there's no names or numbers, which is really annoying, especially since I've uh, now put them all out of order because I've been working on it. <laughs> but before I did that, I did the swatch chart. So I'm just uh, slipping this uh, video in. And as you can see, the colours are really quite nice. They're a range. We've got some nice greens and yellows and a lot of blues and mauves, as you would expect. There's a nice range of tans as well, but personally I'd like a few more greys. I'm not bothered about the white not being there, but I do actually like grey, but it's not, I guess, pastel pretty. You could imagine using these pencils in like Japanese books like Colours Make You Happy, where everything is just so deliciously pastel pretty. But I do like that they've got a nice little range of the colours. Like, as you can see there, we've got the 
the sort of skin tony ones and some tannish ones I wouldn't call them brown we've got nice shades of pink and we've got you know the neon pink that you can see there and you can see that it's easy to fade out with them so I've got darker on the left hand side fading to the right some of these blues are a bit darker than I'd expect for pastels but I guess you know it's always good to have a dark color and we've got lots of nice uh, blues in here but no looking at it I'd probably think maybe you know some more pinks and yellows would be good if they were ever doing a bigger set but it is a nice range of colors that they've got and although I find some of the blues might be a little bit dark to be calling them pastel they're sort of good if you're doing a lot of blues and you want to add shadows and whatnot now the oranges and the peachy colors they're very nice as well and there's enough of those to make me happy probably because I don't really use them that much but I think it's a nice all up range maybe a bit top heavy on the greens and blues maybe if it had a few more yellows and whatnot but still a very good range and I mean with 50 I mean how do you choose which ones come and which ones go and so this is also another sort of neon color that we just had there and the neons are good for putting in shadows or maybe putting down first and these colors are ones that I all used uh, to create skin tone in the Lady Spring coloring book so that's my chart I I've just put numbers on this I'm going to think of some fancy names I guess I'll probably be inspired by another set of my pencils and name them after that but I will have to stick uh, little labels on them and see how they go now I used a very toothy paper to print this out because I wanted to see how they would hold the pencil so I used the uh, art and wash paper 135 grams and it's got a real texture a real tooth to it far more tooth than any of the other things that I tested in the review so I'm just using my car and dash blender to see how it would go on this paper because I print out a lot of digital PDFs and I want to see how well it would blend and so it does blend out I have only blended those two squares so all up pretty nice pencils so let's talk about the pros and cons for these pencils the pro is that of course you get 50 pencils for a very small price they've got a lovely range of colors they're quite creamy they layer and sharpen well they erase like a dream and there's no pencil dust the cons are that unless you're in Europe or a place that sells these pencils the shipping costs will far outweigh the cost of the pencils there's no open stock and the set if it's your only set of pencils you'll need to buy some extras like white and black etc but other than that they're pretty good value they're certainly not suitable for people selling their work on commission but they're pretty good value pencils for the price if you just want a nice little set of pastels to complement what you've already got. So that's it from me. Until next time, stay safe and happy colouring.